Moses. Ah, where are you, Moses? Moses, where are you? I'm here, Pharaoh, beside you. <laughs> where are you? Show yourself. Where are you? There you are! Why do you persecute me? Moses, why? Why do you always torment me with your magic? Ah, fiend! I'll never give in! Ah! You sinned against our Lord. Jehovah is the Almighty, and you will never succeed with him. He is the Invisible One. I'll never be rid of this nightmare. My son. My son. My, my son! My lord, play with me a game of Senate to calm you down. You're right. Senate is a game that appeases the mind. And read the future also, my lord. Well, let's start a game. I'll throw first. Those are the wings of the eagle. The three abyss. Well, well, well. Now it's your turn. Beatles. Oh, don't be in such a hurry. Mm -hmm. The Nile. Well, now it's my turn. Now the twins are mine. Oh, you made a very good move there. The Cross of Ankh. I've lost. Teacher, tell me, what do you see in my future? Oh. <laughs> Ah, I see only blood and fire, my lord. Moses! Moses! Your servant is listening to you, my lord. Another disaster will strike the Pharaoh and Egypt. Only then the Pharaoh shall let you go. Announce this event to my people. On the 10th of this month, let each of them take a lamb for his own family. 
If the family were too small to consume a whole lamb, let them share it with the neighbors. Your lamb will be male, a yearling without blemish. You shall keep it until the 14th of this month, and the community of Israel will slaughter it as a sacrifice at sunset. You will take the blood of the lamb and smear it on the doorposts of the house you ate in. That night, you will eat the meat of the lamb roasted on the fire, together with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Don't eat it underdone or boiled in water, but roasted on the fire. Don't leave any of it until morning, but burn what remains of it. You will eat fast, with loins girded, sandals on your feet, staff in hand. It is the Lord's Passover. That night, I will go through the land of Egypt and smite all the firstborn, both man and beast, and vanquish all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood on your houses will be a sign, and as I see it, I will pass over it, because I know that you are there, and I will do you no harm when I punish the land of Egypt. That day shall be a memorial for us forever. We will celebrate it as a feast to the Lord from generation to generation. As an ordinance, you will all procure a lamb for your family and will sacrifice it for the Passover. But will the Lord really smite the firstborn of the Egyptians? Yes, he will smite them all. The Lord's exterminator will pass and smite the Egyptians. And when he sees the blood on the doors, he will pass over. When you enter the land the Lord will give you, as he promised you, you will respect this right. And when your children ask you what does it mean, you will answer. This is the sacrifice for the Passover in honor of the Lord. Where are you? Oh, there you are. I haven't heard news of Aaron and Moses in a long time. How come? Maybe they gave up. Yes, they've been quiet for many days. They must have submitted to your will. Maybe you humiliated them. Mm-hmm. Oh. In the silence of night, only the windows shone their lights like incredulous open eyes. There was an air of unreality and stillness. Expectation hung in the air. A full moon was set in the heavens and black clouds drifted. For the children of Israel, that night was surely their longest. Suddenly, the eerie silence was broken by the presence of two men. Go get lambs for your families, sacrifice them for the Passover. Then take a bunch of isopo, dip it into the blood, spray the blood on the lintel of your doors. When I see the blood, I'll pass over. The Lord's Passover. Nobody shall cross the threshold until morning. The Lord will pass to hit only the Egyptians, and that day will be for you a memorial that you'll celebrate in honor of the Lord. You will celebrate it year after year like a perpetual law. On the tenth of this month, each of you will take a lamb for his own family, a lamb for his home. If the family were too small to consume a whole lamb, take one in common with the neighbors according to the number of the people. You will count everyone according to the amount of lamb they can eat. Your lamb shall be a male, and yearling without blemish. You can take also a kid. 
You'll save until the 14th of this month, and the community of Israel will slaughter it as sacrifice at sunset. That night you will eat the meat of the lamb. You will eat it roast with fire, together with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Don't eat it underdone or boiled in water, but roasted with fire, with head, legs, and guts. And now Everything what's going to happen? Will go according to the word of Jehovah. Here he is. your eyes. Nobody can look at the destroying angel of the Lord in the face. He's coming! He's coming! Midnight came. The angel of death struck down every firstborn in the land of Egypt. The firstborn of the richest and of the poorest. The firstborn of livestock too. Egypt fell into mourning. Huh? What? <gasps> oh, it's the wind. No! Uh, uh, wake up! Wake up! He's dead! No. My son is dead! <laughs> Anubis, give us our son back! The wind, bringer of misfortune and bereavement, carried away the souls of the Egyptian firstborn dead. Sir! 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 Your eldest son is dying! <laughs> the pharaoh jumped to his feet and ran to his son's bed. There, in the room, he met all the servants, the court and the queen who were already there, crying. Full of despair, hoping in his heart he was not too late, the desperate pharaoh asked. What happened? Is he asleep? No, his soul has already left his body. I can't fight against a god. My son... Divine Isis, invincible Nephethys, the pharaoh's son is coming, receive him. Oh! Ah! There isn't a house without Christ, sir. Now all the firstborn of your kingdom are going to the reign of darkness. All of them, sir, a trip of no return together with your heir, Pharaoh. This is certainly the work of the God of Moses and Aaron. Teacher, call them. Summon them here. Now, my lord. Now. The guards went to call upon Moses and Aaron, as the Pharaoh had ordered. The Pharaoh is calling us. And so once again, Moses and Aaron crossed the threshold of the Pharaoh's sumptuous palace. But this time, instead of doing it because of the Lord's command, it was at the will of the King of Egypt. The Pharaoh, sitting on his throne, dictating to a young scribe, seemed as though the deaths had not affected him. Moses and Aaron entered the throne hall, but the Pharaoh would not look at them. Instead, the dignitaries looked at them with worry and fear because they were afraid.
Moses and Aaron continued walking, crossing the great hall to get nearer to the throne. But still, the Pharaoh did not move. Nearer to the throne, Moses and Aaron stopped and looked closely at the Pharaoh's face, trying to understand the reasons for their summons. But his expression and the bitter wrinkles around his mouth only denoted affliction and the deep anguish over Egypt's recent misfortune. Suddenly... Now! Leave the kingdom of Egypt, you prophets and children of Israel, away! Go serve the Lord your God as you said you would, wherever you want. Take your livestock and all you have, and leave right away. If I forced you to stay here longer, we Egyptians would all be doomed. Go away, go away as fast as you can. You messengers of misfortune, you fiends, you fiends. Leave, get out of Egypt and take with you your deadly God, now. <laughs> The name of the Holy Jehovah may always be blessed. Did you see? We're free finally. The people of Israel prepared for their great exodus. Following the Lord's advice, the Hebrews asked the Egyptians for clothes and items of gold and silver. The Egyptians, anxious to be rid of their former slaves, handed them over. Thus, the people of Israel prepared to carry their belongings out of the land of Egypt. The Hebrews readied every possible means of transport to take them away. Women wrapped dough in leaves and wrapped kneading troughs in cloths and carried them on their shoulders. Finally, everything was ready for the great exodus. Wait, we'll help you. Women attended to their children and prepared them for the long journey. They also filled huge urns with water to drink during their long march to the promised land. Finally, Moses gave the order for the Hebrews to depart. Children of Israel, today, according to the will of the Almighty, we will depart for the Promised Land. This journey will be a long and hard one, but do not be afraid and never be discouraged, because Jehovah is always by our side and he will not abandon us. And so, the well-prepared Israelites began their march out of Egypt. 600,000 adults and children besides turned their back upon the Pharaoh and went on foot to Succoth. There, they were joined by another multitude of people. After 430 years to the day of slavery, the Israelites were finally free to leave Egypt and the Lord's people joined together to march.
Moses took Joseph's remains with him because he had made the Israelites swear an oath. God will be sure to visit you, then you shall carry my bones hence. The children of Israel obeyed Joseph, son of Jacob, who was named Israel by Jehovah, and transported his body to the promised land, his final resting place. <laughs>